everyone, welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Thursday, October 28th, 2021, and this is episode 199. My name is Carol. I am known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry, and I am coming to you from the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada, where it is absolutely bucketing down rain today. Even though it's early afternoon, it is so dark and gloomy, it looks like early morning or late, late afternoon. So I'm afraid the lighting is probably not going to be at its best today, but it's all we have, so we're just going to make the most of it. Um, it's actually rather cozy inside here, and it's sweater weather. Uh, we all love sweater weather, right? I am really happy to be wearing my Swallowtail by Jamie Hoffman. I knit this sweater earlier this year out of four colors of Fiddly Dye Works yarn. And I loved every minute of working on this sweater and I'm so pleased with how it turned out and just so happy to be able to wear it. I'll just uh, kind of stand up briefly so you can see the yoke in all its glory. And then it has this patterning at the bottom of the sleeves and at the bottom of the sweater. So uh, project details will be uh, on my project page on Ravelry, which I will link below and also in the show notes on the blog and in the um, episode thread in the Ravelry group. So um, last week was dominated by clue two of Stephen West's mystery uh, knit along, the um, shawlography shawl. Um, and this week, clue three wasn't nearly as uh, time consuming. And so I had some time to work on some other projects too. So I actually have four different things to share with you this week, including a finished project. So if it's as dark and gloomy and wet and cold where you are as it is here, grab yourself something hot to drink. Um, if you're on the other side of the world, the opposite side in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe you're searching out something cool to drink. In any case, uh, settle in for the next half hour or so and let's talk about some knitting. So first up are my purple finch socks. These were getting pretty close to being done last week when I showed them to you. They are knit from Fiber Nymph Dye Works Mountain Tweed BFL base and it is the Purple Finch colorway. And this colorway was part of the Backyard Bird Watchers Club that I was a part of. This was the third and final installment. So um, loving them very much. Beautiful colors. I love working with the Mountain Tweed base. Um, just a very basic uh, stockinette sock. It's top down, two by two rib on a two millimeter needle. Uh, I did a traditional heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe. And um, in addition to the striped yarn, we received a mini of this variegated colorway to use for heels and toes. And I guess I could have done the cuffs too, but I didn't. So um, yeah, very happy to be finished with those socks and be able to move on to another pair. And as I showed you last week, I had won a prize for the Fiber Nymph Dye Works um, Nature Mel uh, for the third quarter. And um, so those socks are for the fourth quarter. And I am knitting another pair of socks for that fourth quarter um, out of my prize yarn. So I won this uh, set of inversibles yarn from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is on the bounce base, which is I think an 80-20, yeah, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and this is the Garth, not Garth, <laughs> Goth Purple and Harvest Moon colorway. And if you've ever or never worked with the inversibles. They're the same colors, only one skein is predominantly one color and one skein is predominantly the other with a narrow stripe of the opposite color. So here you can see this one's gold with the purple, this one's purple with the gold. And um, 
I cast these on, I should have cast them on the day of this most recent full moon, but I uh, just wasn't on top of things, I guess. Didn't really think about it, uh, but I am calling these my hunter's moon sock because our most recent full moon, which was just beautiful that night here, um, was our most, what did I just say? <laughs> Our most recent full moon was called the Hunter's Moon, and it was absolutely gorgeous here. So I'm knitting these socks kind of in honor of that, I guess. The theme for the fourth quarter of the Nature Mel is sky. So of course the moon is in the sky, so they'll count. So yeah, um, again, just my usual top down, plain stockinette sock, uh, two by two rib, two millimeter needle. I have not yet decided what I'm doing for the heels yet, so um, stay tuned for that. It's always a surprise. It's, sometimes it has to do with where the stripes line up when I'm heading into the heel area. Sometimes it just has to do with what I feel like doing at the time. So I never, or I often don't know myself <laughs> once I've started a pair of socks, exactly how they're going to look like. Um, when they're done. So I have some orange pico tea here today. Piping hot because for a change did not take me 10,000 takes to get this episode going. Quite often I end up sitting down to record and by the time I really get in the flow of things my tea's half uh, cold but today it's nice and hot. All right, my next project, I am so close to finishing. I just have the bind off to do. And this is for the Veranda Shade Shawl by Helen Stewart. This is the fifth shawl in the Shawl Society Five. I'm also knitting this shawl out of Fiddly Dye Works yarn. This green is called Gretchen. Um, I'll show you the shawl because I don't have the other skeins with me. Uh, this is Gretchen, this lighter one is Karis, and then uh, you might recognize this yarn because it's left over from this sweater, and that is the Adira colorway. So I am going to see if I can spread this out a little bit. And unfortunately, the, at least on my camera, the green looks very brown, and it's not. It's a beautiful kind of mossy green with these bits of uh, rose in there. It's not too bad, I guess. So you have this garter stitch section followed by this trellis lace section. And even though the pattern actually has you do these stripes in the in this color, I just thought it would look pretty with the um, kind of cranberry rosy color in there. And then there's just, it's just followed by a garter stitch border. And it's just a very plain stretchy bind off. So um, yeah, that's grown a lot since the last time you saw it a couple of weeks ago. And I'll be happy to bind this off and then be able to start on the sixth and final shawl for the Shawl Society this year. So um Next week, I should be wearing it if all goes to plan. So look for it then. And that brings me to uh, my final work in progress, which as you might guess, is the uh, Clue 3 from Shawlography. So once again, I will uh, talk about the yarns first. Um, so I have to grab them here. I'll talk about the yarns first and then I'll give you fair warning when there was going to be um, spoilers for clue three and I will put a timestamp here where you can can uh, go ahead to um, so that you're not spoiled if you don't want to be. I've actually seen um, another podcast by the uh, uh, I'm not sure what you call it your thumbnail your, your main screen that you see on YouTube. I've seen this one podcast uh, several times with with the shawl right out there for everyone to see. And it's, it's a shame because um, 
we've been asked not to spoil and uh, a lot of people have gone to great pains to give people fair warning and then this person must have missed the memo because they keep putting their shawl like right out there for everyone to see um so i hope if you're knitting that you have not been spoiled uh, before now so uh this shawl took five skeins of yarn and um the first three that i'm using not that they're color a b and c it's just that they're coordinating yarns they are um, this set that i bought from midnight cravings yarn company out of saskatchewan canada and um, it is their light sock, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. This, this color is sidewalk. This is casual Friday, which is dark gray with little specks of navy. And then this navy skein, which is called twilight. So I started with those. And I added a pop of purple. This is from Black Cat Custom Yarn. It's called Luxury Sock, which is 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. It feels really nice and soft. This is the Epic Purple colorway. And then I topped it off with a lace yarn, which I am holding double. <laughs> and it is from, oh no, wrong label. It's from Miss Babs. It is Isadora Lace Yarn, and it is a um, wool and silk blend. 70% merino wool, 30% tussa silk, and it's in the Abrezzo colorway. It was part of the um, Knitting Tour 2014. So I did not end up knitting the shawl that it was meant for. I started it, ended up taking it out, and so these are my colors. So now I am about to show you the um, clue three. So if you don't want to be spoiled, look away and come back at this time here that's at the end of the or at the bottom of the screen. Okay, let's put the yarn away and we'll grab the shawl. So as I was have been knitting through this shawl I've been thinking to myself hmm it's a Stephen West shawl I wonder if we're gonna see any brioche because I know he's very well known for his brioche in fact he even named his dog brioche which I think is adorable and sure enough clue three gave you a choice of using brioche or a uh, lace stitch and since I've never learned brioche, I thought, you know, this is the whole point of this, this uh, project for me is to go out of my comfort zone a little bit, try some new things. And so I have finally learned uh, two color brioche ribbing. And I don't know if there's difference for how you do other things, but um, I'm just so proud of myself. Uh, it was not without a uh, few errors and I was even prouder of myself that I was able to uh, to ladder down and fix some errors uh, rather than having to rip way back so um, I'll show you my full shawl in a minute but I'll just show you this is my brioche section and so if you know anything about brioche you know that one color dominates the front and another color dominates the back. Isn't that pretty? It is and it was so it was just such a nice rhythm to it. I I've been I can't say as knitting techniques. Maybe if I say they intimidate me that's too strong a word. But I know that I have been kind of reluctant to try brioche, partly because it's not something I really expected to like a lot, because I don't really like ribbing and that's what it looked like to me and I thought it'd be a lot like ribbing, which it kind of is. Um, but I really liked the rhythm that you got into and I am now um, inspired to try another brioche project. I'm thinking about doing a hat. I figure that's a good starting off point. So um, after the brioche was followed by this crisscross 
section. And that was it. That was clue three. We still have, well, you saw my skeins of yarn. We still have quite a bit of yarn left. So I have a feeling that clue four is going to be um, epic. <laughs> So I will, once again, uh, for those of you who may not have seen it or who want a refresher, I'll show you my entire shawl now. So clue one was from here down to here. Clue two took us, I'm gonna move it over on this side. Clue two took us from here down to the end of these kind of wings these wedges, I guess maybe that's a better word. And then, as I said, it was followed by this brioche and crisscross section. Let's see if I can get it all in one shot. I'm gonna cover up my face here. There you go. So I'm curious what's gonna happen if we're just gonna carry on in this unusual shape or if there's somehow gonna be some section, you know, kind of filled in in the middle where these uh, two wedges kind of go off each edge. Like, I don't know if you can tell, it's so huge. So we'll find out tomorrow morning. And I expect that once again, my week is going to be filled with this project. Um, I am really itching to cast on a sweater. I've been looking at some various patterns, looking through my yarn, and so I think once the shawl is done, that's gonna be my next cast on. Uh, but I am trying to restrain myself. So I've been concentrating on working on that Veranda Shade shawl, and I will likely cast on the final shawl just so it's at least started but I don't know how much work I will get done on it in the next little while because I really would like to knit another sweater. I'm just in that mood. I guess with, with the weather changing and it being fall and a little cooler and wanting just that little bit more warmth. Um, what I find is especially on a wet day, I feel colder and that's just part of the dampness. A lot of people who live in drier climates and then come come here near the west coast of British Columbia will remark on feeling cold. And I know since my mom moved away, every time she comes back, um, she notices that dampness, that coldness. Um, it doesn't help that I like to sleep with the window open, so our room is kind of chilly, so, um, you know, we're plenty warm enough with covers on at night, but um, it's just does when you, especially when you walk in that room or sometimes down this end of the hall, it's just um, opposite me uh, that way. Uh, you could definitely feel that little bit of more of a chill. But as soon as I close that window, then that really means winter's here because once it gets really cold, I keep it closed. But um, yeah, for now, put on a sweater. Um, as Brenda Dane, uh, podcaster extraordinaire, would say, um, that's what they're for. That is it for all the knitting this week. Other than that, not a whole lot to talk about. I was able to get out and tidy up the last garden uh, before the rains hit, so I was really glad about that. Uh, so until the rest of the annuals die off, there's not a whole lot I can do outside to prepare for winter. So that's a good feeling. Um, a few weeks ago, I did some overseeding on the lawn, places where we'd had some moss and also where we would had some mole activity. And I was really happy to see that the seed has taken root and that those areas are filling in. Last year, I left it too long and so they were all bare through the winter. Uh, what I wasn't so happy about was a sign of new mole activity um, and last, during the last couple days. So um, last night I set the mole trap and was 
really happy to see it had been triggered this morning, but unfortunately, Mr. Mole got away. So I've reset it and crossing fingers that we can take care of the mole before we head into winter. Uh, they're just so destructive. And then at this time of year, you know, like I say, it's just too cold to overseed and it just, just makes such a mess of your yard. It's an ongoing um, issue as those longtime watchers of this uh, podcast know I'm continually in a state of mole war. <laughs> Uh, so Cameron has uh, been home for the last couple weeks. It'll be two weeks tomorrow, which I think is maybe the longest stretch since mid-April, since he started working out of town. So it's been really nice to have him around. Uh, we've settled into a nice routine again. Um, it's been nice to expand my um repertoire of meals. Not that I'm any more fond of cooking dinner than I ever was, but it's nice to have more choices and it's nice to sit down at a table with someone else and eat together and share our day. So um, just enjoying that kind of getting back to normal again. On um, Saturday, we went out for dinner to my cousin's place. It was a sort of a celebration um, gathered together all of the people who um, worked on the recent um, project at our cabin uh, for the water system. So it was a way of uh, celebrating each other and also celebrating my cousin's good friend who is a plumber by trade. Well, he's a plumbing inspector now by trade and uh, lent us his uh, expertise um, and time. And so we were very grateful for that. Um, and we're excited to see how it fares over the winter and hopefully things uh, start up and go smoothly come spring. Uh, but we definitely think it's a huge improvement on what we had and should serve us well for years and years and generations to come. Um, yes, I think that's it. Uh, so my something good for this week, and actually I learned about this last week, um, was my, uh, our daughter-in-law, she uh, just became a teacher last spring officially, and she has been uh, doing some substitute teaching so far this fall but she just was recently given a uh, TOC contract. A TOC is teacher on call, so substitute teacher, uh, given a contract. And so she's guaranteed full-time work uh, for the rest of this year. And we'll have a Christmas and spring break paid. So um, that is very good news for her. And our son makes things a little bit more stable and predictable for them and obviously um, brings in some more money. So um, that is good news. She's very excited about it. So she'll be working um, uh, in four different schools. So she still doesn't know every morning where she will be, but she knows that she's guaranteed to be somewhere. Um, so it's very good news indeed, happy for her. And yes, I think that is it. So um, if all goes well, <laughs> I will be back next week with episode 200. How is that even possible? Um, I'd like to think I'm gonna plan something special. I can't guarantee that's going to happen. Just the way my weeks have been going. Like I was gonna record yesterday and then I ended up dilly-dallying with some things in the morning and then something happened to throw the rest of my day off kilter and or off schedule I guess is a better way of putting it so um, I can't guarantee anything and I also know that I am going to be um, very engrossed in the uh, Stephen West knit along so um, we'll see it's just a number doesn't really change anything so Okay, 
Okay, um, I hope you are all well. I uh, thank you for all of your um, kind comments over the past week. Um, welcome. I know we have a few new subscribers, so welcome. Uh, thank you for checking out the podcast and thank you for subscribing. I hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So thanks so much for watching one and all, and I will most likely see you again next week. Oh, happy Halloween. That's coming up on Sunday, and that's also our youngest son's birthday. He is going to be 30 to this year, which is another thing that's hard to believe. <laughs> that's our baby. <laughs> anyway, have a great week. See you soon. Bye.